So hello and welcome to the 47th episode of the Spotlight Podcast, the unofficial podcast for Century 21 sales representatives in Canada. We discuss the hot topics and important news in the real estate industry. So I'm your host, Linus Killius, and with me as always is Aaron. Hi, Linus. Hey, how's it going? Good. So Aaron is a general, man, general, no, you're a broker and general manager with Century 21 Heritage Group. I'm sure maybe your agents think you might be a general sometimes. <laughs> Aaron has an extensive background in online marketing technology and customer service. And I'm the head of business development at the real estate marketing company, Homania. So we've got a solid foundation growing from what we've discussed over the past several weeks. Setting up your CRM, open houses, geographical farming, and targeted prospecting. Now, one area of advertising and lead generation that we've left largely untouched at this point is online lead generation, the red herring of real estate. For almost as long as the internet's existed, real estate agents have been honing and refining the methods for generating leads online. It's gotten to the point where you need little or no tech knowledge to purchase or generate online leads. But the real question is, are you generating online leads effectively? Generating leads can cost money and time, so it's important you're getting the most out of your campaigns. And when you do have an incoming, uh, incoming online lead, how do you handle it? Getting leads are one thing, but converting the leads efficiently is what separates great agents from the rest of the pack. So Aaron, online leads, do you want to, I mean, it's, it's a pretty nebulous term. Do you want to tell us what you consider to be an online lead and how you generally get them? Yeah, so I've been doing uh, online leads for uh, over 10 years, really. Uh, I just remember even back when Facebook was just getting into paid advertising, um, using the online lead generation stuff that Facebook did to uh, generate leads, um, using just creative ads and, and whatnot. And uh, over the last 10 years, just dabbling here, or there, trying different things. And so I got a bit of knowledge there. But uh, generally, the question is, what's an online lead? So anything that you can do online in order to get a call or an email or somebody that's interested in some sort of information that you could possibly turn around and uh, uh, turn into an opportunity. Well, that's a pretty general definition Very of general. online so. lead. <laughs> uh, like, wh where, where would you say that most online leads would come if you had to like, say categorize yeah, so it to like, break it down for us? Examples could be things such as um, ads that you pay-per-click, uh, ads that you put on Google, uh, pay-per-click ads from Facebook or any other source that you're paying for. There's uh, more of an SEO solution, which means that your site is search optimized. So somebody lands on your site because uh, they've searched something on Google and they've got there and now they've submitted an online form or requested information. Um, so yeah, you can pay for them or you can get them organically. I guess landing pages is another one as well, right? A lot of yep. agents will pay for landing pages, like, you know, a little snippet about some sort of interesting item with a little form at the bottom. So is it just simple enough as like just something where there's a form to collect, capture information or yeah. uh, like a, a way to contact you via email or something too, I guess. Like you said, like you can have these organically going to an agent's website and they can end up calling you because of that. That can be considered online yeah. as well. Well, interesting enough, um, I got a call yesterday from a, a company. Um, you know, I get about 20 calls a year and I'm sure the agents listening to this have got calls from companies that uh, do some sort of online lead generation for you. So I got a call from them and you know, I was asking them a lot of questions and something that I just realized over 10 years that I did a lot of, which was landing pages. I did a lot of landing pages. Um, so I would give something of value um, and then have them go to a page that captured the information as soon as they submitted a form, basically. And uh, um, he was very much big on, well, you know, the way we do it is is not through landing pages, but houses, just houses for sale. I'm like, yeah, we've been doing that forever, but I really, you know do all this landing page, but I sort of really put some thought to it and started realizing that that's what really consumers do want to do. They want to actually search for homes. So, you know, I'm starting to rethink some of the strategies that we're going uh, forward with, with uh, some lead generation and going back to some of the homes for sale stuff. So there's lots of opportunities out there. Yeah. And that's generally it. As long as you have like for landing pages, whether it be like, you know, a for sale information or whatever, you need to give that information to the to the person before they're going to willing to fill out that form to find out more information or whatever it is that you capture. So you have to make sure that it's not like some some sort of sleazy landing page. It actually has to have some sort of good high conversion rate, and you have to have strategies implemented for that too. Yeah, I guess the prime directive: if you give information to them, you can then therefore get some information from them, and that's the, of course their contact information. Yeah. So. What's the most 
efficient way to generate online leads. I know like we've mentioned already that it's very like broad and general term. We've got, you know, you can pay for leads through, or well, not pay for leads, but pay for ads through Google and Facebook to go to your landing pages. You can even pay like third parties just to get you leads. What's the best way to go about it considering, you know, agents are often busy and don't have a lot of time or maybe don't even have a lot of money. I was going to say there is no, there's no right answer there. You have to qualify uh, each agent that wants to get online leads and find out what they're capable of doing, how much time they have to do it, who they're going to have convert, who's calling them back. There's uh, there's a lot of uh, sort of variables that you have to take in to find out uh, what's the best package or best way to go for each agent. And I mean, like you said, that every agent's different. I'm assuming new mm -hmm. agents generally have a bit more time on their hands sure. and maybe less money, whereas well-established agents have less time but more money. Is it Does it make sense for either situation to get someone to do this for you, like the optimization mm -hmm. and all that, especially if you don't have a lot of tech background, or is it something you should start dabbling in yourself and just you know treading in through the waters by, by yourself? Yeah, I, I guess my um, suggestion, and this is whether or not you're tech savvy or not, I, I'm going towards this, the, the way of getting somebody to do it for you. I really am. I mean, even if there's more of a charge, they generally can optimize and spend more time on uh, generating those more efficiently. Uh, and the time you spend, everything is about time and uh, you know, time and money really in real estate. If you're spending a lot of time doing things, you're, you're not concentrating on the things you should be doing, which is the things that we talked about in the last four episodes. So if you're going to do any online lead generation, um, it's good to have some technical knowledge to ask the questions about the people that are now offering these services. Uh, but to actually try and delve in and think that you're going to do it yourself, take it from somebody who's been doing it for 10 years, it's just not worth the time uh, to, that you're going to spend to do it. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of ways of even like social media. It can be a rabbit hole you can fall down of and become a really large time sink if you're not utilizing it effectively and you're spending too much time focusing on it. Absolutely. And, and like you said, too, hiring a professional to do it, not only are they doing it more effectively and efficiently, like in terms of time management, you're probably saving more money in the end because you're getting higher quality uh, results out of it. Yeah, that's right. And the time that you're spending doing other things, it's creating leads uh, on its own. So you're really doubling up on that. So, Okay. So let's say you've somehow managed to have a steady stream of online leads. No matter how many you get in, what's the best way to handle incoming leads? Like in terms of time frame, what do you say? Like, what do you do? Yeah. And that's the key. Um, anybody can generate leads now. It's, it's now got to the point where, you know, the industry and, and there seems to be a rush this year of uh, a lot of agents uh, going in this direction because there's a lot of companies now promoting it. So anybody can generate uh, the landing page. Anybody can generate uh, somebody to call in on, uh, on a given value proposition or whatnot. Um, the key is the conversion rates and uh, industry standard conversion rates um, are around 2%. So if you get 100 leads online and you convert two of them, that's a, you know, that's a standard conversion rate. Um, good converters will convert as high as four or 5%. Um, poor converters, zero to two, right? So you can sort of know where you sit stand by the amount of leads that come in and how to convert. Um, but there's definitely some tips and tricks that, uh, that will help with that. And even the numbers you're throwing out there, like one versus two versus four per hundred, can end up making your money and time spent much more efficiently used. Like you know, you're talking about someone with a four or five percent conversion rate compared to a one percent conversion rate. They're getting four to five times as much out of their online leads as that poor quote unquote performing agent. Yeah, it's a difference between making fifty thousand a year and four hundred thousand a year. Yeah, in a lot so, of cases. So, what would you do to help improve your conversion rate to be mm -hmm. that good agent? Like, what would you do? No, speed of first contact is number one. Um, if you contact the lead, and let's say you get a good quality lead that did give a phone number, if you contact that lead within five minutes, you have an 87% better chance at converting that lead. I mean, that's a significant statistic right there, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, not everyone can be on call every single minute of every single hour of every single day. So what's the best strategy to handle those, especially if you're a busy agent and you're you know constantly on appointments, you don't have time to follow up on leads every few minutes? 
Um, there are different, again, tips and tricks. One of the things I got, I, I got an Apple Watch. So um, even if my phone was put down and it was dinner time or whatever, um, very inconspicuously, I get a little <laughs> buzz. I look at my watch and uh, and see a lead come in. So I'd excuse myself and go answer that or call them back. Um, so that's a little you know, little trick, but um, other people will hire um, specific lead converters and they're on call. Um, there are teams that have these people on staff and up to four people answering leads because they're getting thousands a month. I mean, they're spending a lot of money, but you can go as, uh, as, as little as one person doing the old Apple Watch thing um, all the way up to that. And then there's other things. For example, Facebook allows timed ads so you can time your ad between nine and five tomorrow and not have to, you know, uh, do a lot of calls at night if, uh, if a lead, you know, obviously the lead's not going to come in if the ad's not running. That's good to know. Um, in terms of like quality of leads coming in too, can you maybe talk a little bit about like what the difference is between like just a bad quality lead versus a good quality one? You mentioned before you said a good quality lead with a phone number, but a lot of leads that you come that come in will have a phone number associated with them, but it might just be an email or a name. Right. Um, that doesn't uh, obviously it probably makes a big difference what kind of information you come have coming in, but what should you be looking for? Yeah. So, well, first of all, the quality of the ad will determine the quality of the lead a lot of times. So ads, for example, an ad on uh, Facebook, um, power of sale foreclosure list, um, click here, um, opposed to an ad that says uh, free home evaluation. Um, you'll get maybe five leads over a month for free home evaluation and a hundred for the list of power of sale properties. But I'd much rather have a five uh, higher quality lead Home, home evaluation rather than 100 people looking for a list of power of sale properties under 200,000 or something. So quality of the ad is one. And then the information you ask for and how easy it is for them just to easily put in their name, address, not address. A lot of cases, if it's a home evaluation, it should be an address. But if you can get um, if you're getting an address, you're getting a great quality lead. If you're getting an email, you're getting a lukewarm lead. If you're getting a phone number, it's a better lead, right? So um Obviously, real phone numbers are good. So, <laughs> yeah, watch out for the five 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 numbers. <laughs> so, do you often in your landing pages and such, when you're asking for information, do you force the user to leave a, yeah. a phone number? Yeah, I started doing ads. the The best ad I had ever in terms of the amount of requests I got uh, was done very early, and I did an ad for the power sale foreclosure list. Uh, about 10 years ago and I for for every dollar spent I get a lead so thirty dollars would be you know thirty leads so a thousand dollars I get a thousand leads which is amazing right we don't get those quality anymore but it was a very low quality um, what I call Mickey Mouse leads um, literally Mickey Mouse was asking for a list of power sales right so they get you know incorrect information um, so uh, going back what was the actual question there it was uh, uh, using emails versus phone numbers. Using emails. Like so in that case, numbers. in that case, I did not force a phone number, right? So what I started doing is tweaking it, saying, okay, now instead of thirty for thirty, I added the phone number as a mandatory field, and then what I would get is half as many. So thirty dollars would give me fifteen leads, but those fifteen now I can, you know, better sift through. It's not a waste of time anymore because I can call those leads. Now half of those were wrong phone numbers, but seven of them were, were right numbers. So uh, it's a, that is a, is a case of numbers. It's a numbers game in that case, really. So in terms of numbers games, I know you can buy bulk leads. Yes. Do they tend to be good quality? Can you, can you Dep pay? Does it yep. Depends on the, co the quality of, or sorry, depends on the company. So uh, there are certain companies will just give you leads, flat out leads. Uh, we were using one for $3,000 a month. They guaranteed 200 unqualified leads, right? Um, there was another company that said, uh, we'll charge you $1,000 a month for 10 qualified leads. Um, and these are qualified. If, if the lead didn't turn out, you're allowed to ask for another lead. Until you had 10 people that you're actually working with, that's $100 a lead. I'd pay all day long $100 for somebody who's actually willing to work with me. So that was a good one. Um, but even at the 10, you know, it's one of the 10, if you're lucky, would work out. So you're still, you're still, you know, spending a lot of time and it's still a numbers game in the end. So when you're like fishing around trying to find a company you want to pay 
to get you leads. <clears throat> Obviously, looking at are they qualified, unqualified leads. Um, is there anything else that you should be like asking questions about when you do before you do decide over fork, fork over a significant amount of money to a company like this to to give you leads? Because obviously, like yeah. we've been talking about this whole time, quality and quantity are two different things. And ten leads that are qualified don't necessarily equal like a thousand unqualified junk leads that are just you know email addresses that mean nothing. Um, right. So, like, what else should you be looking for besides say like qualified versus unqualified when you're trying to shop around? And there's just different models. Some will generate leads on your own website. So they'll actually build you out a platform so you can manage it yourself and the lead comes in and you put them on automatic drip campaigns and all this uh, stuff that you are able to maintain and monitor. Um, and those are usually, you know, bigger, robust systems that uh, that they'll set up for you. Then there are flat out just here's a lead, right? Just a number. You do whatever you want with it. Um, so th those are the questions I'd ask is, you know, how are the leads coming in? How are they qualified? What uh, was the question that they clicked on? I always want to know what, you know, what am I um, following up on? <laughs> yeah, what am I following up? If they if they say here's a buyer lead, well, what do they want? <laughs> right? Well, it was on a this this type of ad. So, what type of ads they're running? I find a lot of them are now um, straight out just generating leads from uh, searchable websites, which I'm sort of really surprised because anybody can go online these days, and I'm surprised it still works. Anybody can go on Realtor.ca and look for homes. They don't have to give anybody a phone number. So, these uh, website companies that are generating traffic by pay per click to your uh, site to search for homes, I just I. I still have a hard time grasping why people still put in their information um, to get, let's say, more pictures on the listing or to get put on a list of homes to be sent to them. Like, I'm really surprised that people are still doing that now, but it is working still. So these are the questions I want to find out. Uh, how are they coming and what type of leads? If it is a lead to see a house, those are the best quality leads. So I would pay for that all, all day long. Yeah, but, but if it's a, a list of open houses next week, yeah it's a it's a lot less quality so you want to find out yeah ask those questions yeah it's always surprised me the volume I mean, the <coughs> volume of people that are willing to fill out these forms like you mentioned as well yeah. um i've i rarely fill out forms i'm very careful with the information i put in but there are people that will do it and that's you know the important part at least from our aspect right and that's why i say it's a numbers game yeah. right uh, it's like door knocking, cold calling, or any other type of lead generation. It's, it just comes down to finding the right person at the right time and sifting through the, the poor quality. Yep. And there's a big trend in the U.S. right now, and I imagine this is eventually going to filter up to Canada, but it might take a little bit longer because of our privacy constraints and our privacy laws up here. Um, but there's been a lot of research into um, to trying to do predictive lead management. So you'll have a yep. large database say like Facebook or Google who, you know, they track pretty much everything you do online, like your buying habits. And they know about more about you than your, your spouse might. Um, and they can actually predict, you know, these three people out of these 30,000 are the most likely to be buying a house within the next, you know, six months. Mm -hmm. And they can pull out that kind of information predictively and send it along, I mean, theoretically, to, to real estate agents and such that, you know, that are very valuable yeah. leads. Facebook is actually coming out with something, um, and they're really uh, the big companies like Amazon, Facebook, um, Google. Um, they're sharing technology, and uh, they're able to take now buying patterns and all the rest of it, search patterns, and dictate who is the most likely to be a buyer or seller of real estate. Yeah. So that's coming to Canada. I know that's in the states already, but it is coming to Canada. Um, but I wanted to tell a story about an agent that came into my office uh, last week and a very, very much a similar story probably across the country because it's such a hot topic now, lead generation, before people just kind of shy away from it. But uh, it's an agent that has no technology knowledge. They're using an old website. And he says, Aaron, I just need a solution. Everybody else is doing this stuff. Where can I go to find a solution for this? And it's, it's a really big question to ask these days because there's so many different models. But I was able to just kind of guide him in a direction of a company that uh, gives him a website, does some remarketing, they call it, which is just branding online for whoever clicks on your website, kind of follows you around tar targeted ads, um, and uh, allows him to say, I want to spend $100 a month just on some Google ads. And they do it all for him. So if you can find somebody that does that, I think you're in good shape. And I think that's the typical agent these days. They just want somebody to say, listen, I want to be relevant in my marketplace. I want to be send some ads in a targeted area. 
um, which is be my farm area. And anybody who clicks on my website, you know, as a potential buyer, you know, follow follow them around a little bit. So you're doing a lot of little advertising, and it's he's got a budget of three hundred dollars a month, and that's what he's going to spend for his online. Uh, so if you can you can find somebody to help you along the way in that way, um, I think that's really uh, creative. And of course, your listings and and your and your uh, and your things that you're let's say you're listing a property, it'd be nice to get somebody to advertise those for you online. So does Century 21 have anything now or anything coming down the road that might help agents, say like the one that you described there, um, get on board with online lead generation? Well, they are going with the platform with Real Estate Webmasters. And Real Estate Webmasters, when you're talking about leaders in an industry, they are. I mean, I've done my research. I know that they're really good at what they do. So good on Century 21 for joining up with a company that, that's going to provide that type of service. And absolutely, they actually have a full slew of people that will – um, sit there and qualify leads for you and give you the qualified leads back to you. Um, and they'll charge you for them. Um, that's okay. I don't mind somebody charging me for a lead as long as it's qualified and, and good and ready to go. So, um, so it, yes, there is definitely going to be solutions coming down from real estate webmasters, which is just a, a, yeah, a great service that's going forward. And I even think so, so Linus, we talked about this off, uh, you know, off camera mm -hmm. yesterday about, uh, possibilities with spotlight, uh, Maybe you can tell tell me a little bit about what you had said. Uh, you know, might be coming down the the road for Spotlight. Yeah, you, you turn you turn the tables on me there. I, I was did. trying to ask you for the because I thought it was quite good actually. So that's mm -hmm. why I wanted to ask you. Um, so one thing we're working on, uh, and we're planning on launching this in the spring, is that we're going to be we're updating the Spotlight program as a platform, and we're going to be including in it. Uh, more opportunities for paid advertising through Facebook, through Google, uh, so you can advertise your listings a little easier online. We'll have it so that you can you know, set target focused areas um, that you want to advertise your listings in on Facebook or different demographics as well. And the idea there is, I mean, and we've, we've played around with it so far and done some testing, that even just a small amount of money that you put towards Facebook advertising, for instance, can get you like literally hundreds or thousands, not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds or thousands <laughs> of, of viewership, views to your listing. And you can make sure that they're in the target demographic that you're looking for. Um, yeah. So we've gotten a lot of traction in terms of uh, being able to expose listings uh, just from using uh, paid advertising in our test studies so far. Yeah, that, no, that sounds exciting. Um, I'm all about all-in-one systems. So yeah. if I've got somebody who's doing my photography and my uh, with my websites and generating traffic to them and uh, syndication of all over the internet and uh, you know everything that you guys do, if I've got a company that's able to say, by the way, you know, can you send uh, send out an ad uh, targeted to either my farm area or some you know targeted ad, and I can just hit a check mark and they do it for me? That's what I want. Everything should be automated. I can't be running around trying to do everything nowadays. It's just too much. So that's yeah. great. And that's the idea of where we're going with Spotlight too. We really want to become your all encompassing listing marketing solution or just marketing solution in general. So it is dead easy to, you know, get photographers, get marketing, get postcards sent out, get everything done that you need for your listing uh, and make it like a no brainer solution. So it just is that simple and it requires absolutely no technical expertise. Um, so that's where we're moving to, and we do have an exciting platform that's being relaunched in the spring, uh, and there will be more information about that to come. Don't worry. So uh, keep posted Great. for that. I, and I guess that's a good note to close the show. So if you like the show, you can subscribe to us on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you happen to find your podcasts online. And please don't forget to leave us a five-star review on those sites because it really does help. And watch this and past shows at spotlight.century21.ca slash podcast. And if you need to reach us, you can email us anytime at podcast at homemania.com. That's podcast at H-O-M as in Mary, E-A-N as in Nancy, I-A dot com. So this podcast is brought to you by the Spotlight Marketing Program, which we talked a little bit about there at the end. An exclusive marketing package available only to Century 21 agents in Canada. Spotlight provides agents with a comprehensive internet marketing strategy for their listings. Provide high quality HDR photography, studying HD video tours, a cutting edge responsive website, and an extensive advertising system that will help sell your listings faster, sell them for more money, impress your clients, and generate leads, fiddle DD. Find out why so many top agents are using Spotlight by visiting spotlight.century21.ca today. Aaron, thanks again for helping host. Thanks, Linus. Have a good week. Yep. Everyone, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.